According to the former US Senator Harry Reid, Vladimir Putin is behind the swarms of UFOs filmed buzzing American warships. Harry Reid pointed the finger of blame firmly in the direction of the Kremlin after the Pentagon confirmed the leaked footage was real. Wait till you hear this. As the era of soft disclosure comes into full swing, and as the most advanced nation on the planet admits they're being buzzed by an intelligence that is not their own, questions arise. Are alien beings, not of this earth, investigating human activity? The Pentagon revealed to various media outlets that the latest video showing the mysterious crafts buzzing US warships on the American coast were very real. Not only this, they also consider this to be a breach of US airspace and potentially an act of war. The sensational footage was captured by US Navy destroyer using night vision cameras and showed several mysterious flashing pyramid shaped objects in the skies over the American coast. Former Senator Reid told Mystery Wire UFO News, They are coming in swarms, like bees, like insects, so many of them. Asked if the UFOs could be advanced Chinese technology, he replied, Always remember Russia. The Soviet Union is run by a man who used to run the KJB. And they had as many as 31,000 agents at any one time, so Russia is involved in this. There's no question about it, according to Senator Reid. Nick Pope, who investigated UFOs for the British Ministry of Defence, told the Sun newspaper that these objects may be hypersonic drones, potentially from China or Russia, but don't rule out extraterrestrial visitations. Because no matter how you look at this incident, it's only one of millions more that have gone unexplained. People report being abducted and our animals are being mutilated. Ancient Native Americans also report countless incidents where UFOs use lakes and mountains, apparently entering long-established outposts. And he believes that the US government may not know who's actually behind this mysterious phenomena. The latest strange photos were leaked from a Pentagon UFO probe by the UAP task force, which has been gathering evidence for a report for Congress that's due to shake the world this June after President Trump ordered full disclosure of the unidentified aviation phenomena with his last presidential action. The sensational clip has certainly startled the world. It was captured with night vision cameras and it was obtained by Jeremy Corbell under the Freedom of Information Act. The footage shows unidentified flying objects flying above four US destroyers, including the USS Kidd Navy destroyer in 2019, in American airspace. Strangely enough, this is certainly not the first time that Navy pilots have encountered these mysterious crafts. With Admiral Michael Gilday, the Chief of Naval Operations, admitting that he has no idea what they are. When asked directly, if the US had managed to identify these objects that menaced the destroyers, he responded by saying, No, we have not. Most of the sightings bear similarities. Some are tic-tac shaped, while others are triangular or circular. Nick Pope said in a recent interview, he said, Firstly, there have been many more such incidents than the ones people currently know about. The clue here is that in 2019, the US Navy issued guidance to its pilots the details are classified, of course, but it was telling them what to do if they encountered a UFO. And that guidance implies that we are dealing with much more than just a few isolated incidents. Secondly, I'm sure the US military intelligence community knows more about all of this than they are currently letting on. Mr Pope points out the acknowledgement in response to a Freedom of Information Act request about videos classified secret and briefing material classified top secret relating to all this, supports this conclusion. His best estimate would probably be hypersonic drones, but the question remains as to who is operating them, and did they have drones 20, 30, or even 60 years ago? We think not. Are these incidents related to another part of the US military, by another nation, probably Russia or China, or even by extraterrestrials? Or perhaps it's the development of intelligence from within the states out with the government itself, a second entity. The US government currently doesn't know what these are, but with spy chiefs currently working on a report for Congress, we may learn more soon. The first reports to be confirmed by the Pentagon date back to the now infamous event of 2004. Hey, 
The incident unfolded before the eyes of two warplane pilots from the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz, which was on a routine training mission to the Pacific Ocean off San Diego. The, wind. the wind's 120 knots to the west. The footage was shot from the USS Nimitz six Super Hornet fighter jets on a routine training mission about 100 miles into the Pacific Ocean when they were diverted back to check out an aircraft spotted in radar from a US Navy cruiser, the USS Princeton. Two videos show three encounters between warplanes and what the Navy has now admitted officially to be unidentified aerial phenomena. Commander David Fravor, a former US Navy pilot, and he says the objects committed an act of war. They performed complex moves which is not natural to any man-made technologies. Insisting on the authenticity of what he saw on November 10th, 2004 when he says, This was not like we saw this thing and it was gone, or I saw lights in the sky and then it was gone. We watched this thing on a crystal clear day with four trained observers. We saw this little white tic-tac because we're about 20 feet above it and it's going north, south north, south and it's abrupt. The next sighting, or at least the ones that has been leaked and confirmed by the Pentagon, were reported less than 10 years later. Seven US hazard reports compiled by the Navy are believed to have taken place between 2013 and 2014 and involved Boeing Super Hornets that were flying in airspace off the coast of Virginia and North Carolina. The Virginia UFO was described as white in colour and approximately the size of a drone, or most shockingly compared to the size of a missile, according to the report. Between 2014 and 2015, US Navy pilots from the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt spotted strange objects flying at hypersonic speed over the east coast of the United States near Florida. This was reported to the Pentagon and Congress. And similar sightings of UFOs were made by USS Russell in July 2019 off the southern coast of California. The USS Kidd, USS Raphael Perlata and USS John Finn, which were also nearby, spotting the mystery crafts. And this all forced the Pentagon's hands, because in 2019, the Pentagon finally admitted that it has launched investigations into UFO sightings and that it still analyses reports of flying saucers. The Department of Defence went as far as to reveal they will continue to probe such reports in a bid to keep the nation safe. A spokesperson for the Department of Defence was forced to admit that reports claiming that investigations were stopped in 2012. This was not true and they had never stopped. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. You know, this wave of media coverage, we've been part of it, but there's stories everywhere on, on the subject matter on major news organizations who would never give it the time of day for a, a long time. Do you have uh, pride in how it's developed because of the, the key role that you played in this happening? I don't like to be proud of things that's um, arrogant, but I have no doubt that one of the things that I feel comfortable with and glad I worked on is this UFO thing. It was something that uh, had been ignored and my staff told me to stay the hell away from this. It's not gonna do you any good. But it was something that to me that stirred my curiosity. And I, I've, I have so much enjoyed uh, learning more about something that people really care about. And I have to say that uh, as a result of the money that I got with the help of Senator Stevens and in a way, some $22 million of federal money, we were able to prove that not a dozen people have seen these UFOs, not a hundred, but thousands. So yes, I feel good that I uh, laid that out. So it cannot be ignored anymore. You know what I worry about? There's so much news on this. I mean, there was a news conference this week with Lou Elizondo, New York Times, Washington Post, NBC News. They're all there. There are stories everywhere. I worry about UFO overkill, whether it's too much and people get sick of reading about it. Are you able to keep up with it all? I don't know if I keep up with it all, but uh, I keep up with it. I think that Lou has done an excellent job. Uh, in spite of all the 
naysayers who say he never worked for the government and he's just a total phony. Lou has always kept his cool and uh, I think has added a great deal to the conversation. I have, I learned that you have written sort of an op-ed piece for the New York Times. I, I don't know if we are, can talk about it now or when it's going to be out, but what did you want to say? What did you want to say in the New York Times? Well, I've said it already. Uh, they have it. It's up to them when they're going to when they're going to run it. Basically, what I've done is indicated that uh, I've been involved in this. I told them how I got involved in it, and that uh, it's something that can't be ignored. And I'm happy that we're making progress. The federal government no longer, uh, including people at the Pentagon, no longer uh, criticize or harass or stop promotions of people who report these occurrences. In fact, they have uh, done just the opposite in recent months. They now tell their pilots, those in the sea, uh, to report these unusual circumstances. And I, I appreciated the honesty of the Pentagon because when asked what were these things, they say, we don't know. Rather than try to say they were balloons from uh, some kind of a weather experiment, they said, we don't know. And that's honest. That's being you know, honest. Uh, after I've covered this for 30 years, I am aston astonished by the change in the attitude of the media and Congress about the legitimacy of this issue. The UAP task force was created by Congress last year. They're, they're due to present a report to Congress by June. Give me your take on that, because it seems to me that that is your baby. Whether you want to take credit for it or not, it's a direct outgrowth of your programs. I don't see how we can uh, lose anything by this report. I hope it's substantial. I hope they don't run from the subject. But, you know, we have Senator Warner from Virginia, a very conservative Democrat, who is speaking out on this. We have Marco Rubio from Florida, who, by the way, was raised in Las Vegas, who is speaking out on this issue. So I think that the conversation is good. And the other thing that I think is important is that uh, we now have better equipment. Pilots from the airplanes with their cell phones taking some dramatic pictures. The idea that Marco Rubio and Mark Warner uh, on the Intelligence Committee could agree enough to authorize this task force is sort of astonishing in itself in that the Re Republicans and Democrats can agree on anything. Agree? Yeah, Washington is not, we, uh, many times we look at Washington and think it's, it's a, a tribal society. And so to have Rubio and Warren working together, Warner working together on this is Really remarkable. I'm proud of both of them. You know Warner well. I mean, you worked with him for a long time. Uh, I don't know if this is a private matter, but are you able to call him and talk to him about the issue? Yes, I yes I have the opportunity to do that, and I'm going to talk to him not until next week, though. Uh, you know, the idea of a UAP task force sounds like an interim uh, project. They ran into some roadblocks from agencies that don't want to give up the information. You ran into that yourself when you tried to turn uh, ATIP into a special access program. You know, you would have to be a contortionist to be able to uh, withstand all of the different uh, obstacles they place in your path. It's uh, remarkable that uh, they are preventing the American public from knowing more. What do you suppose the reason is? Is it a multitude of reasons why they would still resist coughing up the keepers of the secrets, why they'd still want to keep them secret? I think it's, uh, you have to understand in government, if it hasn't been done before, we're not going to do it. And I think that's the biggest problem right there, that uh, it has, it's been a subject of, that is uh, tabooed, I don't know if that's the right word, but they, it's, a, it's a topic that people don't want to talk about, and government does their best to keep the public from being advised as to what's going on, and I think that's improper. 
found a video clip from November 1989, where a brown haired George Knapp is talking to a young Harry Reid about UFOs in a live interview. You were already at, way out in front on that, but could you imagine all these years later where it would lead and how much change would take place uh, regarding this topic? George, I blame you totally for <laughs> all the time I've had to spend on the subject, <laughs> but, it's, but it is because of you that I first was uh, directed to look into this. Uh, and I can still remember the meeting. I walked into a big conference room and there were lots of academics and interested people and a few oddballs, but it was uh, stimulating to me and the subject is still very, very interesting to me. I think that it's, uh, a subject that uh, if a person's curious, you need to look into it. Uh, you know, there are books written now about uh, the subject. I read the, the one by, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Avi Loeb, uh, the Harvard yeah, astronomer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, uh, he's a astrophysicist from Harvard. And it's an interesting book. He bases that whole book on one uh, message that he believes came from outer space. Very, very interesting. And uh, there are others that have done good work on this. Leslie King of the New York Times has done remarkably good work on this and other subjects. So it's an area that is uh, of interest to the American public. Uh, and, you know, it's a uh, you can be uh, someone who is uh, kind of a person who thinks some kind of a interworld conspiracy is taking place, or you can listen to the people who are trying to do everything they can about science. Whichever field you're in, uh, more power to you. I think it's good. I'm glad to read both and listen to both uh, views. Of course, we've been able to do some stories and share with the public some really interesting images. It seems like the visitors, the people who fly in this technology have picked up the pace. They've made very dramatic demonstrations that says, hey, look at us. We're here. Three photos. How do you like, how do you like the uh, pyramids floating around? Well, I want to ask you, what did you they think go, about that? They go right into the ocean and they don't, they, there's nothing there. What did you think when you saw that flying pyramid video the first time? I just thought to myself, oh, this is something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it almost looks preposterous and, and then how outrageous. It's certainly not aerodynamic, that design. And, goes right, and they go right into the ocean. <laughs> Let's say the uh, science comes up with pieces of material that's not from here or a craft or a being or something irrefutable that demonstrates that this is somebody else. It's from somewhere else. How do you think the American public will react? Can we handle it? I don't know how the public will react, but I think as long as we understand that we need to make sure that we are scientifically driven, that uh, we're gonna be okay. And if it's coming from places we don't understand, that's still okay, as long as we understand that there is stuff coming from other places. Uh, I, I, have no, I have no problem whatsoever with that. You know, we've seen these uh, reports and documents that we've obtained and photos uh, and information from uh, the Navy about these drones, that they call them drones as sort of a generic term, buzzing their ships. And they don't know where they came from. They can't track them. They're coming in swarms, swarms like bees, like uh, insects. So many of them. I mean, we have to assume, and we have to at least keep our minds open to where they're from. The idea that China has made advances in their drone technology, I don't know if it's scarier that it's an unknown or if it's scarier that our adversaries have made great strides in technology. And always remember, Russia, the former Soviet Union, is run by a man who ran the KGB. They had as many as 30,000 agents at one time, KGB, KGB agents. So 
Russia's involved in this, no question about it. The UAP task force uh, is going to give its report to Congress and maybe do a follow-up report, but that a lot of people think that's not enough. Do you s feel that there should be support for a more permanent study of this, some kind of an organization like what you started a long time ago that has an ongoing responsibility for figuring this out? Yes, the federal government spends trillions of dollars every year. Now, I believe that there should be an ongoing uh, entity within the Pentagon would be the best place for it, whose sole job is to stay on top of the issue of UFOs. A long time ago, when we had a conversation after that New York Times story came out, you were sort of surprised by your phone ringing off the hook with calls from your colleagues uh, who were unaware that this had gone on and were really interested. Now it's expanded further. The media is covering it. Congress is willing to investigate. The military is cooperating. Um, I know that you were not entirely comfortable with the idea in the beginning that this would be part of your legacy, but it is. It is part of your legacy. Georgia, I believe that uh, one of the... Uh, entities that we don't give enough credit in general is the press. The press is the reason that we are where we are in regard to UFOs, the press. When I got that call from Helene Cooper at the New York Times, uh, I told her that if you want to talk about little green men, I'm not going to talk to you. But if you want to talk about science, I will talk to you. That was the beginning of learning more about the subject press. We don't give the press credit for much of what takes place in our country. The press is uh, Donald Trump and others have called it, uh, you know, uh, fake news and all that kind of stuff. But we as American, uh, American society are so much better off because the strength of the press in America today. And anything that goes in hurting the press is something that is not good for our country. During the time I was uh, in politics, I had the hell kicked out of me lots of times by the press, but I never, ever, ever uh, denigrated the press because I do believe that America is as good a country as it is because of freedom of the press. You have said many times that, look, I want to separate this investigation from the idea of little green men, because you have to. You have to keep it straight and narrow. You can't assume that these are aliens from another dimension or from other planets. But the fact is that we don't know yet. And um, you, uh, the idea of little green men is something that you're at least open to down the road. I'm open to anything that uh, is enlightening to the American people. I think that uh, if you are fixed in saying that uh, there's nothing, uh, that, that none of this uh, that low Bryce about uh, coming from someplace else is valid, you're making a mistake because you better just say, let's wait and see. And that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting and looking and seeing, and I'm not cutting anything off. Well, Senator, I, I'd like to say thank you uh, from the whole world for your work in kicking this off and all the changes that have been wrought since you initiated that first program and study. I mean, this is your baby, whether you like it or not. Well, you know, uh, as I said, my staff press told me, stay the hell away from it. <laughs> uh, but it, it didn't hurt me. I, you know, I can hear in Vegas, I'll go into an elevator or someone will see me, are you Harry Reid? Yes. Thank you very much. And they'll use you say for your work on flying saucers. So people are aware that we've been doing things on the subject of interest to the American people. I'm going to continue doing that. Uh, and I'm not going to be repressed by people saying, why the hell don't you spend some, your time on something important? I think this is important. Last question. What if it's never resolved? What if we never get an answer to it? We still have to try, I guess, but I mean, this is, this mystery. George, never, never is a long time. Yeah. So I don't accept that.